Television. Uh, I'm Quadell Edwards, Hollywood Q. I'm here tonight with Pope Brandon Bronson, and and and, and I got uh, my guy here, <laughs> Sean Grugel and Brian Boff. We are all here tonight. If you if you could tell that it, it, the, the, it's a little bit of a mix up here. We got a little bit of a mashup. Uh, we got a milk carton hanging around here somewhere with uh, Jason Klaus's face on it. He's oh, not we here made tonight. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> Set it right on the table. That would have been perfect. We should have put it on the table. But he's not here tonight, so we're gonna have to run the show. And uh, we send our our greetings to uh, Mr. Klaus wherever he is. But we are here to talk about some wrestling, guys. You guys ready to talk about some wrestling? Absolutely. Oh, all right, all right. Well, let's talk about some wrestling. So we're gonna start off with a with with a recap of the king and queen of the ring, which took place in Saudi Arabia. And, uh, you know, to me, I thought the show was pretty predictable. That's definitely a good word it I was, use. I, I thought it for, for a predictable show, I thought it was a solid predictable show. But I want to hear you guys' opinion because I already see some faces here. I, I see Sean's face over here. I, Put the camera on Sean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to start off with Sean. I want to know, we, we, we're going to go through the matches here. Uh, we, we, we have a new king. We have a new queen. Uh, we have King Gunther. And, and I noticed that Gunther never put that crown on. He still hasn't put the crown he on. He still hasn't put that crown on. Even on Monday night, he come out holding it like it's a, a championship, which is cool. I think uh, Gunther brings a lot of prestige to that uh, uh, piece of equipment we'll call it at this point uh Nia Jax I I think she was just damn happy to get some recognition and to get a title so to speak put on her um I mean she literally was legitimately emotional and who else could have been the queen because uh, Laya Valkyrie no she's not ready for something like that yet well, uh, we, yeah, we all know who I want as the queen, but it didn't come to fruition this time. I was like, you just said, who else could have been? I'm just saying. Well, but, you know, and, speaking of her, <laughs> I can honestly see she's becoming the money in the bank for winner. Sure. You know, she didn't win this queen of the ring. But talking about the, the king and queen, I noticed that a lot of people that were on this show were people who were... Uh, kind of left off of the Wrestle, either left off of the WrestleMania card or didn't really have that shining moment. You see Gunther, he lost his Intercontinental title. Uh, Nia Jax wasn't even on the card after, you know, making such a strong return. But uh, when you see these participants, the king and queen of the ring, Brian, do you think that Nia and Gunther were the deserving choices? Because I see you tapping that that, that I mean, I, I just, I'd love to see Tiffany get it, but I mean, I also would like to see her win Money in the Bank, and I don't know if we can throw all the accolades at her at once. I mean, I would, but uh, obviously we all thought Guther was going to win it, and we all wanted Guther to win it. So that was clear cut. Absolutely, you did the right thing there. With Nia, she would have been my second pick. I, I think as long as she's safe in the ring and not destroying people, which well, looks kind of did. very I scary bit. there I at mean, the end. Let's talk about that finish real <laughs> that quick That finish now. looked a little <laughs> scary. That, I mean, she squashed that woman. I mean, I, I was, I got on the internet after that just to, just to see if there was any uh, news updates on Lyra, because man, she, she had to get scraped up off that mat, she man. folded, <laughs> straight folded. <laughs> I mean, I, to me, that was one of the best bonds I dropped since Yoko. Oh, that sure. was uh Well, legit. remember, Nia did that to uh, Rhea, too. And Rhea was out for, you know, 
a, a minute or two because that Lyra is half the size of what Rhea is, and I'd be surprised if we see her on Monday Night Raw next week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as far as how predictable you really thought this pay-per-view was going into it, Pope, tell me, when you see the king and queen and you see all the winners, did you really predict that this show was going to go the way it did? Um, I mean, I'm not particularly surprised by any of the results from this show. Uh, you know, Gunther and Nia Jax being the winner, it was the best that... Twas the best Chestershire, twas the worst Chestershire, but we deal with it. Um, but sometimes the predictable ending is what you need. You don't always mean to swerve every show. Uh, to give a very pertinent uh, pop culture example, how much would Avengers Endgame have sucked if they just swerved us at the end, you know? Sure. Sometimes you gotta go with the predictable I mean, ending. kind of did in the first one. The yeah. first part of Endgame. Well, <laughs> yeah, but that's Infinity why I went with... <laughs> That's, that's Infinity War. This is Endgame, brother. That's why I didn't go with that one. That would have been a perfect example for, like, man, Duke the Dumpster came and won Queen in the Ring. There's the Duke reference. <laughs> it had to come, brother, brother. Yeah, as far as the, uh, the we, have, we have a new women's champion. We Yay. have a new women's champion. Let's talk about it real quick. Now, Liv Morgan, I already know there's not too many fans in this room of Liv Morgan. But if you are, is this a deserving title win for Liv? You're, you're hey, asking I'm me? I'm one for you, Sean. All right. Uh, I'm no fan of Liv, but I like what they're doing storyline-wise with Liv, Mommy, and Dom right now. It's good to see an old throwback storyline, kind of soap opera-ish, you know. Is Liv and Dom really having a relationship and Dom's trying to hide it from Mommy? <laughs> you know, I, I'm real appreciative of this so far. Liv having the title, okay, we can let her have it for a little bit, but let's get it back off of her, get it on Rhea as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah. Now, I've seen a lot of people complaining and saying that uh, Liv should have won that battle royal they had. And uh, I'm, 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 I believe that it's playing out the way it should because you, I remember going back and uh, seeing that she, she cashed in that Money in the Bank briefcase to win her first women's title and for her to win a battle royal to win her second there's i mean she needs to be able to beat a top contender and really make herself legitimate so brian do you think that was the right move do you uh, the think way that, they, that way that she won that was a legitimate win though i mean there's the I mean, it's, it's it. still <laughs> kind of the same thing it's like we'll give love the title but we, she can't win it clean that I, might be the story i am uh, I, I like Liv. I'm not, like, over the top about her. I think, like you said, the storyline is great. I want to see it unfold. Clearly, the best person to have the title for when Rhea comes back, for her to beat somebody, would be Liv. So, yeah, let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pope, what do you think about Liv Morgan? You know, I am i haven't seen a ton of Liv's work. I don't. Certainly not enough to be able to form a real opinion, uh, but I'm just happy to see the women's title on someone other than the usual faces. It feels like any time I tune in, it's like Charlotte's the women's champion or yep. Becky's the women's champion or, you know, lately Bianca's been the women's champion. To see someone different get to hold that belt for a while, um, especially since the women's division has, so like, significantly fewer belts to fight over than, like, the men's division... It's a nice breath of fresh air. I'm for it. Yeah, I'm for it too. And that, 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 you know, and I'm I'm not the biggest Liv fan, but you know I'm okay with her holding this title until Mommy come back in because you know what's gonna happen when Mommy show up. She's getting the belt back. She's on top. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about the woman that she defeated. The woman that she defeated. She defeated Becky Lynch, and we know that we have a little story going on with. Becky Lynch, which is more of a real life story, we uh, know that I believe it's this weekend that her contract will expire. She did not renew her contract. I'm quite sure that maybe the offer was on the table. WWE is not stupid, but uh, and I believe when she does sign, if she does sign, she's gonna command one of the biggest contracts in women's history. Now I know I'm mm. not the biggest. <laughs> We seem like that's going to be the 
running thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're, I'm not the biggest Becky fans, but you know, I respect her. I respect the work that she's put in, and uh, I'm looking at <laughs> Brian's face. I can't hide it. <laughs> but I respect the work that Becky has put in, and uh, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to you first, Brian, and uh, tell me, does Becky Lynch resign with WWE? Eventually, yes. But I think uh, she also wants to be a mommy, and I think that's what she's gonna do for quite a bit before she does come back. And I think if we do see her come back, it may not be a long run. It may be a show up here and there type situation. I mean, once she gets a taste of being a full-time parent, she might not want to come back. That's true, that's true. But you know, a lot of people get that itch. Yeah. Know? Uh, we, uh, I know somebody that's, that has that itch now. <laughs> <laughs> they make things for that. <laughs> you know, they do. But. uh. Pope, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, okay, brother. <laughs> um, Pope, now, Becky Lynch, she may have that Brock Lesnar type schedule where she's uh, part-time, kind of like Roman Reigns, you know. Uh, is that deserving for someone? Who, she, she, she's still relatively young, so. She's still relatively young, but at the same token, uh, with people like Becky and... Uh, even stretch it out further because I think that someone like Charlotte should uh, can benefit from this too. Spending more time off TV so that when you're on actually working a program with someone, it's something fresh, something new. Um, to go a step further to talk about Becky's contract situation, um, I'll be the one to make the prediction. It would not shock me if Becky tried to make some kind of Hollywood transition or something. We're seeing a lot more examples of wrestlers doing stuff like that with Batista and John Cena recently. Uh, you know, Sasha's already got her foot in the door with uh, uh, Disney. I, yeah. Yep. Uh, I think that, you know, Becky is more than young enough. She's attractive. She's athletic. She'd be able to do a lot of her own stunt work. Um, you know, if she's taking time off to go be a mom, then cool. But I'm calling it now. We're going to see her in something in the next few years if she doesn't resign here. You know, I can see that, too. Buff absolutely hates everything you just said. I do. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I'm like, have you seen her promo? She can't act to save her life. She has the worst faces. <laughs> Cannot stand her. That's fine. Netflix means movies, too. Netflix means actors. Bollywood. <laughs> Sean. I don't know if she's the uh, <laughs> right makeup for Bollywood. They need a, They need an enemy. <laughs> All right, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Sean, yeah. you ready to talk about some Becky? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, no, he's I, not. no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Triple H. Uh, they they've already called people out on working these part time schedules, which you know him, him and his uh, problem with uh, Will Ospreay in AEW. Mm -hmm. um, I think Becky is going to take some time off. I hear through the rumor mill that her and Seth have like a you know big RV where their family stationed at. You know that's cool. Uh, but I was actually doing some thinking on it. You know, uh, look at Mark Henry. He went into AEW. His contract's up. He's not resigning. The man was smart. He made bank off of Tony Khan. Jake Hager. Yeah. How many how many matches did you see him work? The possibility of Becky Lynch doing something for her family going to AEW, working the limited schedule, getting, I mean, look, Mercedes Monet just got a $10 million contract for three years. Yep. Imagine what a former women's champion who just left the company is gonna get if she was to sign with AEW. Think about that money, think about the response, and think about that pop, and then think about the matches between Becky Lynch and Sasha, or I'm sorry, Mercedes Monet in AEW. I think what it's gonna come down to is personal time and money. Uh, Seth Rollins is gonna be working an opposite schedule of her, working Monday nights and uh, PLEs. She's gonna probably be working, what, Wednesday, Thursdays, and their pay-per-views. I'm sure they're going to find a couple days. I only get two days off a week with my wife, and that's one day too many as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, they should be okay. I, th I, think, I think the possibility of an AEW signing would be beneficial for her and Tony Khan, but at the same time, if she was to take time off to WWE fans, they really miss what they don't have in front of them at the time, and if she was to come back, it could be a big money situation for her yeah. then as well. That would mm -hmm. be a big comeback. That would be a big comeback. Speaking of contracts, there's a lot of contracts that are expiring. 
right now. And uh, and I noticed that WWE is like really waiting to the uh, very, very end of uh, some of these superstars and uh, people behind the scenes that's, that's contracts are uh, expiring. Even AEW lost Mark Henry and Jake Hager. But uh, a big one that really stands out and uh, one that really just hit news was uh, Chad Gable. Now, Chad Gable is in the middle of the biggest push of his entire career. Would it be a smart decision for somebody like Chad Gable to, you know, explore? What do you think, Pope? So Chad Gable is phenomenally talented. He is, uh, I used this analogy the last time I was on the show, I think, but this is another, like, Dean Malenko of our generation type guy, right? But Chad Gable's never going to be the guy anywhere. Uh, That might be a bit bold to say, but that's my opinion on the matter. And I think that the run that he's having in WWE right now is, um, it might be bold to say that that's the best that he's ever going to get, but if I were Chad Gable, I wouldn't want to walk away mm. from that anytime soon. Well, come on, Shorty G was money, man. <laughs> Shorty G. And he resigned during that time. <laughs> yeah, that's my thing. If he resigned during that crap, then there's no way that he's going to look out for greener pastures Absolutely right now when not. he's actually got something to sink his teeth into. Both. <laughs> what do you think about our boy? I think Chad Gable's biggest strong suit is his ability to annoy you and get under your skin. Mm-hmm. I think they finally captured that perfectly in a storyline. I, I I don't think he would even risk taking away this push. I think, like, I honestly agree. It's his the biggest moment he's had in his career. Yeah. Look, like right now and what could be coming forward in the next year I think it's the best thing he has on the table. I don't yeah. think, he, and he's smart enough not to pass on that. Think about it, he's getting a you suck chance now. Yeah, that's that's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> that's an honor, man. Well, let's uh, let's 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 transition, man. Let's transition into NXT. Now, NXT had a big show uh, this past Wednesday. Wednesday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, yeah, Tuesday. One of those days. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah. This past Tuesday, he, they had a big show. You know, we seen we Ooh. seen the sexy red show up. We seen uh, then we seen a sexy red title show up. Who I I don't think is that sexy, but uh, you know, I don't think either one of them is that sexy. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we seen uh, we guys. also seen a couple of other appearances, and it seems like we are leading to something that might be really, really cool. Maybe a, a, a forbidden door type thing in WWE with NXT versus TNA. Um, now, I'm gonna start with you, Brian. Um, we seen one of your ladies that you've been eyeballing for the last- Oh, yeah. Um, you know, a few I'm months like, ever since the Royal Rumble, you've hey, been man, talking my about wife this. Wife watches you've this been... show, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you've been talking about Jordan and Grace for a while. Yeah, she so. almost made my future uh, king and queen of the ring for the Mount Rushmore. Uh, oh, that'd have been a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think she saved that segment because, I, like I told you, Roxanne Perez was just killing me with her promo work. It just like she was reading an index card out there with no emotion on her face. I don't know how she's holding the belt. I think that Jordan Grace coming out there saved that whole segment. Yeah. And I would love to see a working relationship with WWE and TNA in any way that we can get it. Like I said, whether it's just with NXT or, mm-hmm. if, like I said earlier, if it was in a Survivor Series type faction where we actually get them versing each other, it, like it's an only good. Type of it's thing? good for both companies. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, now if it goes really, if it really goes that deep. Do we see maybe Jordan Grace put over uh, Roxanne or vice versa? What what do you think we got here, man? Man, uh, I've said it on here before. I don't like to name drop, but Jordan Grace, I remember her when she first started out. She was coming up to XICW doing independent shows. 
the amount of work that she put has put in from the time that she came to XICW, she looks nothing like the beast she is now. And steroids. Uh, I, hey, you know, they do a body <laughs> good, I guess. I mean, take a look at Pope. What were you on? Three on, two off? Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> I can smell the testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> but Jordan Grace, when, when you... <laughs> when when they, she was standing toe to toe with Roxanne Perez, it looked like a full grown woman facing off against a little girl. Uh, <laughs> oh, I am not a fan of the NXT women's division at all. There's only a few that I really pop for. Uh, you know, Sol Ruka is one of them. Yeah, that's um, cool. Uh, Santino Morella's daughter, uh, Ariana Grace. Ariana Grace is awesome. Um, yeah. You know, uh, the rest of them, they're all very cookie cutter. They all look alike. <laughs> we, they, we said that. <laughs> uh, their, their, their promo skills are severely lacking. Jordan Grace didn't hardly have to say anything. The crowd erupted for her. I hope not only does she take out Roxanne Perez, that we start seeing other women from TNA come in there. I would love to see Lady Frost come in there. I want to see these crossovers happen. I mean, uh, Triple H hates using the term forbidden door. Well, I think it's about to be kicked down. I can't <clears throat> wait to see what happens next. Yeah, I think he don't like using forbidden door because there's another company using that, that term. Yeah, well, you know. You know. But, uh, <laughs> Pope, you have any dream matches? You know, I know you probably got a, a quite a few dream matches. You asked me just the right question because this whole time I have been sitting here thinking, if we are doing any form of WWE, uh, WWE versus TNA, there we go, I speak good words, there's one match I want. AJ Styles, Frankie Kazarian, run it back one more time. One more time, please. That is the rematch I have wanted to see. I have loved seeing how both of those guys have matured since the last time they got the opportunity to link it up. I'd love to see that match one more time, man. <laughs> you know, that actually makes sense. Uh, I don't know if anybody been catching like the storyline with uh, AJ Styles where he almost seemed like he doesn't have that much time left or there's nothing else he can do or what can he, you know, he already lost against Cody and what's next for him, you know. Could this TNA thing be like a, ooh, could that be like a sign, you know, because that's, that's a stumping ground right Don there. Holland just hit a great one. Oh. Trey Miguel versus Seth Rollins. Ooh. Yeah, think about that for a minute. That would be amazing. You know. We oh. were, uh, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish that one. No, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say we were, uh, I don't remember who I was talking to before the show. It might have just, just us, someone might have come in. But uh, to kind of maybe segue into the next topic, uh, WWE versus TNA Dream Match, I'd love to see now. You know, Josh Alexander and Ethan Page used to team up, and I don't know if they ever oh. had the one-on-one -on -one match after that was all wrapped up. Ethan Page definitely looks a lot different now than he did back then, though, and I would argue he's... They both become much better workers now than when they were uh, teaming up together, so I would love to see that match. That's a possibility now. I don't want to see a match, but I want to see Ethan Page with uh, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory in form of faction there. I think that would be absolutely amazing. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Oh, wait, look at that. Welcome to Fatal 4-Way Fantasy Booking. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you know what? Ethan Page coming in, that, that was, uh, yeah, that, that, that was, I love the way they did it. Yes, they kept kayfabe so good I this love, time. I love the way, uh, I, what's the commentator name? I, I, I can't remember the, uh, the, the commentator name, but uh, he said A-E, and he got cut off by yes. Booker. Yes, oh, yes. That was perfect. That was awesome. Yeah. That whole segment to me was great. And uh, Ethan Page officially signed with WWE. Now, we got a viewer question. Oh, we got a viewer question. All right, okay. let's bring it in. Uh, he wants to know if the panel thinks that Cody Rhodes, this is from Mark Taylor, if Cody Rhodes is going to turn heel anytime soon. Cody Rhodes left AEW specifically because he did not want to turn heel. If WWE made Cody Rhodes turn heel, I don't know how that would play out, 
but it would be the funniest thing in the world. It would be. <laughs> I would slap my thighs together, point at the TV, and shriek laughter. That would be that would be the funniest rib in the history of professional wrestling. I could only see him turn heel if there's an evasion angle with this TNA thing and he does the Hulk Hogan turn and mm. sides with the TNA guys. Because let's face it, he's had history with them before. I mean, so. I, we also have to remember... Chances are, if when Roman comes back, he's going to be a face. And so if he's a face, then we're going to need Cody to be a heel for to see that match again. So I, I think it's definitely in the future. How they decide to do it, I don't know, but I, I see it coming. What about you, Q? Heel Cody. I can, I'm, he's definitely going to turn heel. I, I really believe that he's going to turn heel. Not soon, but I give it a year or two. Yeah. I give it a year or two. I can definitely see Probably Cody closer to like a year and a half, two years. Yeah, yeah, because eventually the fans are going to start to John Cena him. Yeah. And I believe Triple H is a little bit smarter than uh, Vince was at his old age. You know, if you know what I mean. Man, I, I hope. <laughs> and I, and I, I believe they will pull the trigger with that turn. I don't think Cody will have a problem with it, to be honest. Like, after uh, we see the success of turns now in WWE, like, look at The Rock, man. When he turned heel, that was the best thing yeah. that was not planned that happened. <laughs> so, I mean, him turning heel might even revive him a little bit when he started getting real stale. I don't know you guys are. He's... Now let's... Uh, let's let's move on to another segment. Eh? Let's keep let's keep it let's keep it moving, um, and I'm gonna kick it over to Pope to really help me out yeah. on the recap of Double or Nothing. All right, I understand why I got invited back because we needed to talk about AEW again. <laughs> And flamethrowers and hit and run buses. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, let's get to so, that. So, uh, <laughs> just quickly go over the pre show real quick. Deanna Perazzo defeats Thunder Rosa. The Acclaimed defeat the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage. Well, I can just say something real quickly. How do you not do more with a guy like Brian Cage? Brian Cage is, if you made a wrestler in a lab, you would get Brian Cage. He has a look, he has a great look. He's got a great look. He's got yeah. a great move set. Honestly, yep. I have no idea if the guy's any good as a promo, but that's what a manager is for. I, I wish Jason was here. He he has an absolute disdain for Brian Cage. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing that I'm Jason this week, and I love Brian Cage. Moving on from there, going to the main card, uh, Will Osprey defeats Roderick Strong to win the uh, International Championship. I don't think it's that big of a surprise if that no. happened? No. 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 After that, the Bang Bang Gang, Bullet Club Gold, retain the trios titles against Death Triangle. I'm a little surprised if that happened, but more importantly, the juice is loose, baby. Juice Robinson's back. <laughs> juice Robinson, one of the most entertaining men in professional wrestling, in my opinion. Uh, That's juice. Tony Storm defeats Serena Deeb to retain. I don't think there's any big Yeah, we talk there. about that. No yep. surprise there. No surprise. No, it just needed to be a good match. And from what I understand, it was a solid match. Uh, in the storyline that will never end, Chris Jericho defeats Hook and Shibata to retain the FTW uh, title. Why does this title still exist? I don't know. What it's, do it's the For the World title. According yes, for the world. <laughs> for the world. For the That's world. what yeah. the F stands for. <laughs> Fondu, the world championship. Uh, John Moxley defeats Takeshita and the Eliminator. I was a little disappointed about that, but with the politics of like dealing with another company's title and knowing that Moxley's got like a big title defense, I think in a couple days here, I understand. I was just happy to see Takeshita get a big match. Adam Copeland retains the TNT Championship against uh, Malachi Black. More importantly, Big Gangrel. <laughs> Gangrel. Gangrel was there. That is all I want. If Edge is anywhere, Gangrel should also be there. If Edge goes to the store, Gangrel <laughs> should be peeking out from behind the candy counter. <laughs> hey, you know, that's, that's the entrance he wanted. 
in WWE. He yep. wanted Gangrel to be a part of, you know, the end of his career in WWE. They didn't give it to him. He got it, and he got a broken leg for his effort. Way to go, Adam Cole. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what uh, salts my peanuts about that? Uh, the story was that like WWE didn't think that enough people would remember the gang girl to bring him in. Yep, Biggest that. pop of the night. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you're advertising Brood Edge. Right. Gang girl was the leader of that group. What uh, are yep. we doing here? Yep. Moving them right along in the least surprising result of the night, I believe Mercedes Monet wins the TBS championship by defeating Willow Nightingale. Uh, Chris Statlander turning on her afterward, which also I don't think very big surprise there. No, nope. Um, nope. I'm just glad they're giving her another storyline, even though she took the defeat there. Yeah, I mean, I'm just happy to see more than the one women's storyline per show. That's been yeah. fantastic. Um. In what should have been the main event, I'll say it, uh, Swerve Scott defeats uh, Christian Cage to retain the world title. No big surprise there. Uh, and in the main event, who cares what the result was? Darby Allen lit a man on fire. Darby Allen lit a man on fire. <laughs> that happened. Now, I was talking with uh, Sean here on the way here. We are on very different ends of the spectrum. I got to see a man get lit on fire. I could not he be any happier. Expected. I am but a simple man. I like to see people get lit on fire. That's my version of entertainment. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is professional wrestling. Uh, I, you know, I've said it for years and years and years. Finishers are getting to the point where it's going to take a shotgun blast to the face to put someone down. I didn't say nothing about a flamethrower. So, right. um, and it didn't put him down. It was just silly. <laughs> well, either did the bus that hit Darby. Or, you know, it's it's getting to the point of ridiculousness in AEW. Uh, I understand it's wrestling believability. You're supposed to be able to, you know, go to your happy place when you watch this. I'm glad you were happy that someone was set on fire. Oh, I'm so happy. But he was he showed up this week on AEW's Wednesday show, I believe it was, and he was walking just fine. <laughs> he didn't need no skin grafts or anything. Why? Because he was douched and all that stuff, that flame retardant stuff, right. to where he couldn't get set on fire. You know, you bringing up the Darby thing, uh, I wish that they would just give Darby Allen that season one, season two, Kenny from South Park gimmick, where they just kill him every week, and then the next week he comes back like nothing happened. You're already basically doing that with Darby Allen. Just put him in yeah. the orange hoodie. We yeah. like have like them drag him away, and Papa Sean goes like, and brings him back from the dead. Each week. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, That's how you oh, have each episode. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to run a quick commercial break. We'll be right back after the ads. <laughs> you hear that noise? That's right, the 21st annual Big Rig Gig is coming to Orion Township Friday, August 2nd from 5 to 9. Save the date for an evening full of trucks, tractors, bulldozers, construction equipment, police cars, fire trucks, and more. Grab your cameras to capture a night to remember it with the people you'll never forget. From seeing vehicles of all shapes and sizes used around town, to the experience of climbing on and through the many machines, honking the horn, and meeting different staff members who work the vehicles daily, this event is a wide load of laughs, all for free. Located at Friendship Park on the corner of Clarkston and Baldwin Roads in Orion Township, be there and join other families to make a strong and healthy community to share the excitement today, tomorrow, and for future generations to come. For more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. All About Connections is a 90-minute suicide prevention training hosted by the North Oakland Community Coalition. This training uses the QPR method to educate and prepare participants to recognize warning signs of suicidal ideation and supply resources to their friends and family. We offer All About Connections to strengthen our bonds and ensure the Lake Orion community is fully supported by the people around them. We are available for ages 14 and up and can customize your training to your group. Whether it is a business owner and their employees or a group of parents with their future college students, this is a great opportunity to connect with one another and build confidence that everyone is prepared 
to help their friends and family in a crisis. If you would like to schedule a training or learn more about All About Connections, email Jill McCollum at jmccollum at nocmi.org. We interrupt this program to bring you this special announcement. <laughs> Hey everybody, you guys are absolutely tearing it up here this week on Fatal 4-Away, um, and we certainly appreciate everybody tuning in. I, unfortunately, as you can tell, uh, have, was unable to be there live in the studio, but I wanted to put in my submission for the Mount Rushmore segment for this week. We're talking about our Mount Rushmore of tag teams. Uh, great idea from Brian, and uh, like this was one that t took me a minute to actually figure out, and I actually made a last-minute change in it. But here is my Mount Rushmore of the best tag teams of all time, me personally. The Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal. The Midnight Express. The Heart Foundation. And the Dudley Boys. T to me, these are the four best tag teams in the history of professional wrestling. You guys are doing a great job. I look forward to being back in the studio in two weeks. And until then, we'll send it back live to Lake Orion, Michigan. And the guys at Fatal 4-Way. Welcome back to Fatal 4-Way. And as you just seen... Mr. Klaus himself with the fatal, um, the, not the fatal four-way, but the uh, <laughs> the Mount Rushmore. The well, fatal us. Mount Rushmore. <laughs> the fatal <laughs> Mount Rushmore. So we're going to go right into that segment. So I'm going kick to it, kick it over to Stan Lee over here with the white hat. The fatal yeah. Mount Rushmore. <laughs> the we fatal uh, Mount Rushmore. got there. Yes. So, yep. So for the Mount Rushmore, yep, as Jason already told you, so we're doing greatest tag teams of all time. Uh, I have no problems with Jason's picks. I'll just say off the bat, those are pretty good. Mm -hmm. I even have one in common with him, so I might as well knock that one out right now. I put LOD. I mean, as a kid, I, I remember how excited I was to see them come down with the shoulder pads and the spikes. Who didn't want shoulder pads and spikes after seeing that? Right, yeah. um, next up, I went with who I think is currently the greatest tag team going right now, FTR. That's right, I did say an AEW team. Yep. Nice. Hey, they almost made my list. And then I got to play favorites for the state of Michigan. Go with the Steiner brothers. Oh, crap. Yeah, that's right. Know. Ron's daddy. <laughs> 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 There's more than mommies out there. And then last, I just wanted to go somewhere classic, and I went Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. Nice. Somebody in the comments got that. All right. Mm. <laughs> All right, Sean. Oh, me? Um, 101 proof, PBR, uh, the power, tr oh, wait, those, those were all tag teams I was in, my bad. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, we're going to go number one right off the bat. My favorite tag team of all time is the Freebirds. Uh, Michael Hayes, Bam 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 Gordy. I love Michael Hayes, you know, Jimmy Jam Garvin. Um, then I'm going to go a little old school here. Pope probably don't know these guys, but I'm going to go with the SST, the Samoan SWAT team. I know the SST. Oh, okay, very good. Then you probably know these guys too. Uh, DX, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Never heard of them. Okay. And then I went real old school here. I went with Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Fun one. Right. Yeah, fun heat, man. heat, heat all day long. Heat, heat, heat all day long. Oh, I was going to go like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> all right. Pope. My personal favorites, right off the top, Briscoe Brothers. I have never been so entertained by a team. Uh, in common with Bash, we've got the Dudley Boys. In common with Levi here, actually the fabulous Freebirds. They are uh, one of my, they're the best trio of all time. Uh, the last one, I had to really sit down and think about it. And then I realized that as of this year, the Rock and Roll Express are still taking bookings. That's Ooh. right. Yeah. For longevity, there will never be another tag team to do it as long as the Rock and Roll Express. 
And Ricky Morton's doing Canadian Destroyers. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> Ricky Morton's that. doing Canadian Destroyers in between his spinal fluid infu <laughs> infusions. Jeez, yeah. I speak good and applesauce. He's gonna be, <laughs> yeah. It's what they hide the infusions in. Man, that's insane. All right. Now I got to think about mine off the top of my head here. So I'm going to start off with Harlem Heat. Oh, man. With Sherry. <sighs> with Sherry. Yeah, I'm going Harlem Heat. That's ring music, too, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah. I was a big fan of the New Age Outlaws. I, I like, I thought yeah, about it. Yeah, so I'll put, I'm going to do the New Age Outlaws. Demolition. And my last. Demolition's the poor man's LOD. Right, you stop that. <laughs> 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 All right, my last one is I got I to gotta agree with Bashers. I'm going to have to go Heart Foundation. Are you going? Brett and Anvil. Okay. And I just want to point something out to Pope. Freebirds were a foursome. All right, Jimmy Jack Garvin, you're right. No, Buddy, Buddy Jack Roberts. Okay. Jimmy Jack Garvin, Michael P.S. Hayes, Terry Bam Bam Gordy. The inventors of the Freebird girl. All right, so. fair enough. You got me. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a millennial. What do you want from me? I'm not supposed to know anything. You knew the SST. <laughs> I give you props. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the fatal four-way Mount Rushmore. <laughs> segment of the week all right so let's uh move on to um news here no not another piece of news we have a, a a ple coming up by the name of clash of the castle and we have a match that was already made for that show we have damian priest our world heavyweight champion is going to be challenged by Drew McIntyre. So this is going to be a big showing for Drew. He re-signed, so he's ready to go. Is this his time, or will he be punked again? I'm going to oh, start with punk. you. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to start with you, Look, Levi. <laughs> Damian Priest just isn't getting over, and... Drew McIntyre, he's moving the needle right now, cutting some great promos. Fans are, you know, they got, he's got a ton of heat. Uh, if Drew McIntyre doesn't walk out of Clash at the Castle with that title, he, he might as well go sign with Impact or AEW or something. <laughs> hey, he might be able to wrestle for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, who knows? I, 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 kinda, I see what you mean, though. Uh, Damian Priest, to me, has been kind of like that. He's, he's in that gray area. Is, you know, he's trying to play the the baby face by not, he don't want no interferences in his matches, he don't want to cheat to win, but yet he's still hanging out with his, with his, in his, his clubhouse buddies, yeah. you know, so he, they're still hanging around, so honestly, I don't, yeah, I don't see it with Priest at the moment, it's, he's too much in that gray area, they need to really move something with him, he needs to start moving forward, and uh, like, I even, I was talking to, um, to Stan Lee over here, and um, I was saying that if Priest makes it past Money in the Bank with that title, I wouldn't mind seeing Finn Balor winning Money in the Bank at that point. You oh, know, that'd be fun. And, and, and they can play off. At least they will have a story going on. But uh, you know, I don't want to change the subject here. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> as far as Clash of the Castle, do you see? Damian Priest walking out as world champion. No, I don't. I mean, I, I don't see there's a way that you don't have Drew win the belt right there. Basically, hometown. Uh, and like you said, Sean. Like Damian's not really doing anything. He's out there. Everything he's doing is basically forgettable. Yep, he's going to be one of those forgettable heavyweight champions. Yeah, it, and it, it's Jack a shame. Swagger. I really like Damian. Yeah. I don't think he's ready <laughs> for the heavyweight scene. I see him more as an intercontinental, North American, yeah. in that range. Um, maybe someday, but I think he just he he needs a better storyline to go along with it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, and I kind of see this a lot with a lot of the money in the bank winners you know they sometimes they just don't 
click because there's no legitimacy behind them. I mean, it could have been worse. It could have been like Otis, where they literally just took it away from him eventually. Yeah, poor guy. Oh, man, it, it, just a segue. Real quick, I just want to say one thing about Otis, and one Otis is getting over. But Otis was, he, he, he was hurt by the pandemic. He was one of the guys that was hurt the most by the pandemic. You remember Otis was getting over like crazy with, with, uh, with what was the girl name? He was Mandy a, Rose. Mandy Rose. How he could was you forget getting, that name? I don't know. Right? <laughs> are, are you subscribed? No, no, no. But, uh, <laughs> but he was getting over like crazy, and then all of a sudden the world shuts down, and there's no crowd reaction. They gave him the briefcase, nothing to go by. But let's stick to the scrap. <laughs> I was very sad that Nick Baker wasn't allowed to win the title. Anyone who knows who Nick, <laughs> anyone who knows who Nick Baker is, is laughing hysterically. Everyone else is stone facing me like you two just did. Yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> uh, to get my thoughts on the match. I'm like, Britt Baker has a brother. <laughs> uh, oh God! I wait. anyway, we can't go down that rabbit hole right now. Uh, to get my thoughts real quick, uh, you put it perfectly when you brought up Jack Swagger. I feel like Damian Pr- the. The Money in the Bank briefcase is a really fun way to, like, try a title shot on someone. Like, you know, maybe this could be something, maybe it could be not, but uh, it's resulted in way more duds than successes, I think, yeah. uh, to the point where I almost wonder if the Money in the Bank concept is worth retiring. I wonder if its time has come and gone. Uh, but, yeah, if Drew McIntyre loses this match, then everyone who's writing creative in WWE should be fired immediately. <laughs> yeah, I think about, you know, uh, what happened at the last Clash of the Castle when he lost to Roman. And uh, he, he he got up and started singing songs. And, you know, it was... <laughs> I'm never going to dance. <laughs> right, yeah, with, uh, what, what was it, Tyson Fury out there? And they're doing a sing-along after he just got screwed over when Solo first... That was when Solo first came to the main roster, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, he got screwed over and started singing songs. I'm like, yeah, yeah they got to <laughs> They got to redeem him. Well, they either got to not do that again or they got to like go even harder on it and get like a full like swing band. Yeah. Well, with the build that they've been building towards with CM Punk, Drew has so much heat. Punk doesn't even have to be there for the crowd to start chanting CM Punk. I mean, they start chanting it to get under Drew's skin. This is what the people want to see. They want to see Punk versus Drew. It'll be at the next WrestleMania for Drew's heavyweight title. It's plain and, and simple. then maybe we see Seth show up yep. after the end. Yep, yep. Plain and simple. And then you go right it. there to the next one. Fatal four-way fantasy booking. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Triple H. We right here, man. We right here. Uh, he watches. He's still Oh, yeah. Person. He watches. Man. Go ahead and put us on that right and team. So let's... Uh, Kick it over to Levi. Well, you got something for us. Well, let's kick it over to Joe in the booth because <laughs> we got ourselves a little promo over here. <laughs> I can't even enjoy the fact that this Saturday night, IWE 10 year anniversary super show, TNA Impact star Jack Price returns home to take on the mighty Bojack. I can't even enjoy the fact that this Saturday night, IWE Heavyweight Champion Bill Blackwell defends the title against Trevor Strahd and Dave Weston in a triple threat match. I can't even enjoy the fact that the Roughneck Dynasty, the Cream Street Mafia, Player One Derek Crow even, all the stars, Stuntman Mike, Nick Van... Nick Van Gore. No, focus. I can't even enjoy the fact that all the favorites from the present, and maybe even some from the past, will be there this Saturday night. No, because 24K, you, you took it upon yourself to insult everything that I hold dear to me. It's one thing to insult me, but when you insult the IWE fans, and when you insult my wife, my family, it makes a man do things that he shouldn't do. And this Saturday night, Holton Lake, it all comes down on your head. John Campbell's a pretty angry guy. 
and you can see why. Uh, like he said, it's the 10 year anniversary show, IWE Wrestling at the Artesia Youth Park in Holt Lake, Michigan. Uh, you can check them out at IWEGladiators.com. Also, on Saturday, you got UCW Live Pro Wrestling up in Saginaw. And they got J-Rock and High Guy on that show. Um, they didn't give me a website. You know, they're pretty, pretty complete when I give them directions. You know what I'm saying? Um, MPWA, they present the MPWA Collision TV taping from the Farm Council camp campgrounds. The location is in Ann Arbor. Uh, the main event is June Tide versus Atlas Hightower versus Mad Dog Valentino versus James Fury. You can check them out on Facebook at mpwawrestling.com. June 8th, this one is near and dear to my heart. This is the Malcolm Monroe Sr. and the Chic Memorial Show at the Lincoln Park Community Center, 3525 Dix Highway in Lincoln Park, Michigan. Man, they got one match there that is going to be just incredible. It features... Uh, just oh. incredible, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Alex Weir versus Tommy Vendetta Alex Weir is going to take care of some of my light work and uh, Tommy Vendetta I'm still coming for you notable names on this show are former WWE superstars Zach Gowan looks like Homicide and Shane Douglas you can check out XICW on Facebook last one I got uh, June 14th Superior Championship Wrestling at the Modern Skate Park they present Christmas in June no Christmas in June. No Christmas already. No. What a horrible name. It's June. It's... <sighs> anyway, they're going to be in Royal Oak, Michigan. The main event uh, features uh, John T. Keith and Fox 2 Brandon Hudson and Rob Wolchek <laughs> versus Chuck Cold and Father Marquise. So get on over to uh, the modern skate park there in Royal Oak. And Rob Wolchek and Brandon Hudson are on the show. Might not be uh, WWE, AEW, or TNA <laughs> superstars, but Fox 2 reporters, and man, that, wow. that could be a lot of fun. Um, listen, promoters, you guys saw John Campbell on the show. Get a hold of me. We, we can make this happen for you. Uh, and when I send you directions on how to put this stuff into format, follow them, and you will be on here. Just don't send me flyers. You can look me up on the Fatal 4-Way Facebook page the Sean Griggle page or the Levi Blue page. One of the three, you will get a hold of me and let's do this, Q. All right, all right. <laughs> that was the indie roundup for the week. Um, something that I probably should have mentioned about an hour ago. Um, <laughs> There's no phone calls <laughs> on tonight. <laughs> I was going to say something because I'm, like, I'm like, I just reminded him before we started. I've been saying it in the chat room. So, uh, for anybody that's been trying to get through to the phone line. Jason you, is annoyed. Jason's <laughs> yeah, yeah. You probably didn't get through. So, no phone calls tonight. Technical difficulties. You know, the phone's not here. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, as we get ready to put a bow on this show, look at that. We got time, guys. We got I, time. Uh, I got, we, when we were talking about Double or Nothing, we kind of skipped over the fact that there was another return. Was well, better than that. Yeah, MJF? Oh, my God. I cannot believe I forgot. That wasn't on the notes? I mean, we did I it. forgot <laughs> to write that down. I'm like, I am a fool. You know what? We've got time at the end. It was meant to be. It yeah, was meant I'm, to be. We, this was all planned out. <laughs> <laughs> I no. almost went with the jean vest and the leather jacket. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. it's good for Triple H. It's good for MJF. Yeah, it's good for me. I hope that would have got me to remember. Yeah, what a return. My. What a terrible tattoo. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. that's pretty par for the course for pro wrestlers. I've seen more bad wrestling tattoos. <laughs> Why are you assuming that's a dig at you? Why do you think I remember? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you yell at him for that. Look, let, let's talk about MJF's return. When he come back, he, he got on that mic, cut a scathing promo, mm -hmm. but he, he was very, very calculated in what he was saying. One of the things he said, and I pointed this out on the hot tag, was it wasn't New Japan that made MJF. It wasn't Vince McMahon that made MJF. MJF made MJF. Why would he say the New Japan promotion name and not the World Wrestling Entertainment's promotion name? It's because the WWE has nothing to do with Vince McMahon anymore. So MJF is still leaving that door open so there's still that possible, and let's, let's talk about that tattoo. It's this big. He can cover it up with his boots. And, yeah. You know, 
people are going to forget about it as soon as he walks through the curtain to the gorilla position in WWE. Well, it's easier to hide than that god-awful Cody Rhodes neck tattoo anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't wrestle with a turtleneck, right? I'd love to see him try, <laughs> but then I wouldn't have to look at that ugly thing. Yeah, well, you know, MJF, that, that, that return was uh, definitely the highlight of the night. And, um, oh, easy. And that tattoo. I want to. I do want to mention that tattoo. And uh, <laughs> it was a. It was a. It was a. It was a little telling. Like he really wanted us to really believe that he is home and he's not going anywhere. But that was for the fans, you know. Maybe, maybe he got that tattoo for his AEW maybe sharpie. Facebook. That's and, what I was uh, thinking. <laughs> like a. It a looked like it was yeah, sharpie. It, it, yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't that deep. I mean, no, he could it was easily not. cover that thing up. Just put those Psycho Sid boots on without the broken ankle and just, just go in there and just knock knock it out, man. So I, I, I believe that still, even with the tattoo, one day he will be in WWE. Oh, still. I believe it. Yeah. Um, He's your future king of the ring, right? Yeah, he <laughs> is. Him and um, Tiffy, side by side. Him and Tiffy. So do we see an appearance at Clash of the Castle. Do we see Uncle Howdy? When is this coming? Mm. April 16th is the date I believe that the QR codes are pointing to. So I think that's in two weeks time on SmackDown. Is there, is it gonna be a SmackDown? I believe so. I don't know. If it's live TV, it can't go wrong, like, right, right Jason? Yeah. I feel like this is being really <laughs> drug out, like, we just keep getting hit after hit after right, hit. Right, because a lot of people thought it was going to be at the PLE. Uh, and are we going to see the whole six at yeah, the same time, we, or? I kind of hope so. It's been stretched out for so long. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to see yeah, it slowly about, released. I it's getting see. really close to time. It's got to be getting close. Well, it really should have happened like after that documentary that came out for yeah. you know Bray. And, you know, they had a lot of success with the teases when Bray first came back with the White White Rabbit campaign. Uh, so uh, try to say I that a couple times. I you know, right? So I see why they're doing the QR thing and you know trying to create some type of mysterious buzz. I mean, we know now, you know what it is. But I just hope that you know I was never a big fan of Uncle Howdy, especially when no. he tried to drop that elbow. Or a rumble. You know I mean, like, I mean, that's the greatest thing he ever did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of any Halloween mask in any wrestling. Game. Yeah, so I, I'm hoping Mankind. Bo takes it off. You know? Kane? No, never a fan of Kane. Really? Nope. How much time we got? <laughs> <laughs> a couple minutes. Enough time to yell at Levi. Yeah, go ahead, bring it, bring it. Send, send your hate mail to me. You guys know so where to find it. So luchador masks are okay. Luchador masks are okay. I don't okay. like Halloween masks. I never did like the fiend. I didn't like the burned up fiend. You know Bray Wyatt when he was the cult leader. That was my Bray. I, I um, agree with that. Yeah, that was probably, Yeah, I agree with that. that I just favorite. think it's too hindering. It right. can't be. It's got to take away. Like your peripherals can't be the same. No. I just feel like you're not gonna be able to format your best with all that on. Right. Well, look what he did. I mean. Just, the Fiend, all he did was just pretty much no sell and choke people and stick his fingers down your throat. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, so that's the thing, is if you wear a mask, you have to stick your fingers down someone's throat. Well, yeah. It's like mankind. I can't make well, any on that note. <laughs> on that note, I guess we're going to go ahead and uh, I'll see where this is going. <laughs> now it's uh, time for a whole nother discussion to start. <laughs> we want to thank you all for uh, joining us right here on the Fatal 4-Way uh, show right here on Orion ON TV. Will we, be, we will be back in two weeks' time. Uh, I don't know who's going to be here, but uh, <laughs> we are planning to be here in two weeks for the next installment of the Fatal 4-Way right here on Facebook, Orion ON Television. So... Be awesome to yourselves. Be awesome to others. Klaus, we'll see you soon. Peace out, everybody.